Hi everyone, it's Phil Frost from Main Street ROI. I want to welcome you to today's presentation called The Five Steps to Get Your Day Spa Ranking on the First Page of Google. I also want to thank the Day Spa Association for organizing this presentation. And we are going to get started. We've got a lot to cover. First, some housekeeping. If you're new to GoToWebinar, you might not know that there's a Q&A section where you can post questions. And that should be in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And to make sure everyone knows where that is, I do want to ask you to type in where you're calling in from. I know we've got um, uh, people calling in from across the country. So if you could just type in uh, the location of where you're calling. We've got someone here. Let's see, that's Naveen from LA. We've got Michael from, uh, I believe that's Seattle. Lauren's calling in from Denver, Colorado. I was just out in Denver, uh, passing by, going to a wedding, my friend's wedding in Aspen. So that was fun. Uh, Shira is actually calling in from Toronto. Michael from St. Louis. Abby from Syracuse. All right. Looks like everyone has figured out where the uh, Q&A box is. So again, just type those questions in as uh, as you have them. I'll address those as I go through the presentation and we'll also have a live Q&A at the end. And to get the most out of this, I do recommend you turn off distractions, turn off email. Uh, I put my phone on do not disturb and definitely shut down out of all uh, social media like Facebook. All right, here's what we're going to cover today. I'm gonna to go through some important Google updates that you really need to understand. Uh, you need to understand uh, what Google has done in the past that actually uh, make a lot of the tactics that used to work, uh, they don't work anymore and can actually get you into trouble with Google. I call those the old school SEO tactics. And a lot of those old school SEO tactics are dead. And I'll actually go through three specific old, old school SEO tactics to avoid. They'll get you into trouble with Google. Two tactics you can use to get ranked in as little as 30 days. That's one of the um, uh, misconceptions out there is that it takes a really long time to get ranked and while that's true in certain circumstances there are a couple tactics you can use to get ranked very quickly. And then I'll walk through the five rules you need to follow. I do have a special offer and gift for everyone that's attending today. Now, out of respect for your time I want to explain who this webinar is for. You'll get the most out of this if you have a website. We're going to be talking about how to get that website ranked high in Google. So obviously you need a website. I'm going to assume you provide top quality products and services. That You want to be recognized as the number one provider in your area. You obviously want to know what it takes to get ranked number one in Google. And you're willing to take consistent action. This is uh, not a one-time set it and forget it type marketing solution. It, it will require some consistent monthly action. This webinar is not for you if you just want to trick Google into getting, giving you the number one spot. That's what uh, I hear this all the time, that SEO or getting your website ranked high in Google is all about just tricking Google and that's not the case. And I'll actually explain more about that in this presentation. And I already mentioned this. Uh, this webinar is not for you if you just want to set it and forget it type marketing solution. I'm sorry that does not exist with getting your website to rank high in Google. It's definitely not a completely hands-off solution. Now, if you're wondering who am I and why should you listen to me, again, my name is Phil Frost. I'm the founder of Main Street ROI, and our business provides digital marketing services as well as training like this training today. And to date, we've helped over 2,000 businesses with their digital marketing. And my thought leadership in this industry has been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. And I'm also the proud father of these cute kids here. That's Violet on the right. She's uh, over three and a half years old, going to be four in January. She's getting to be an old girl. Uh, and that is... My chubby son, Emmett, he's just over a year and a half. And that's my beautiful wife, Erin. And we live on the upper west side of Manhattan. 
right, I want to give a brief history of Google. It's very important to understand some of these changes uh, to be familiar with uh, uh, the evolution of Google so you understand how to uh, basically play by the rules and make sure you have the best shot at ranking your website high in Google. All right, so back in the days, long time ago, there were there was something called uh, AltaVista. This was the, one of the first search engines. And um, as you can see, SEO was very easy back then because all you needed to do was put the keyword that you wanted to rank for on your page multiple times. And if that keyword was showing up more than your competitors, then your website would be more likely to rank high in AltaVista. So for example, you wanted to rank high for a day spa. You just need to make sure that you put day spa on your page a lot of times and that's all it took to get ranked high. Because of that, as you can see, search results were full of spam. That's why you'd see a lot of irrelevant uh, businesses ranking high in the search engines. And uh, if you remember back in the early days of search engines, you would even see porn sites ranking high for, uh, for some uh, random uh, search phrases. So that was a big problem. Lots of spam, lots of irrelevant results uh, showing up on the first page. And then around 1998, Google enters the market and they come armed with this ingenious twist on search engines and how they rank the websites. Their algorithm is not just looking at the words on the page. They're also looking at how many other websites are linking to your website. And that was a critical uh, change in the, in, search, in the search engines because as, if you think about it, a link from another website to your website is essentially a vote in your favor. If you have a lot of other websites linking to you, that's uh, a lot of credibility. It's almost like social proof, like, hey, this is a legitimate website that deserves to rank high in the search engines. And that's basically how Google's first algorithm worked. It used all those links from other websites to your website as uh, validation to, to, to uh, and they would use that to rank your website high. Because of that, it was harder to trick Google. So uh, Google's al uh, search engine had less spam in it. And because of that, more and more users started using Google. Uh, it was showing relevant results with, uh, with, with some of the better, more authoritative websites ranking high in the search results. Because of that, Google became number one, and they haven't looked back since. And here's a critical uh, detail in Google's story. Google depends on search ad revenue. So not only did they figure out how to make the search results better, they also figured out a good way to monetize it, and uh, a bulk of their revenue comes from people searching in Google and then clicking on those ads in the search results. So if you do a, a Google search for a day spa, you will likely see the first four results at the top are going to be uh, advertisers advertising in Google AdWords. Whenever someone clicks on those ads, Google makes money, and uh, that is the bulk of their revenue. And as you can see, uh, whenever someone tries to trick Google or get a a web page to, sh to rank high that does not deserve to be ranked high, that really threatens Google's business model because if, if uh, Google starts showing irrelevant search results, people are going to stop using Google and go use Bing or Yahoo or any of the other types of search engines that are out there. So that's a, that's a really big takeaway that Google depends on their search ad revenue and that's why they work so hard on their algorithm and they work so hard to fight spam because any type of spam threatens their business model. It, it, it puts them at risk to lose market share. Right, with that in mind, Google has updated their algorithm over the years. And you've, if you've followed SEO, you've definitely heard of these updates. The first one here is called the Panda Update. And this one was really targeting websites that gave a bad user experience. And again, if uh, Google's ranking websites that ultimately give their users a bad experience, 
those users are going to lose trust in Google and they're going to go use another search engine. And that's, that means Google is going to lose money. So clearly, this was an update uh, that was to help users get better information, but ultimately so that Google doesn't lose market share. The next one here is the Penguin update. Uh, it's been around for a while now, and more recently, Google has made some adjustments so that uh, their, the, the latest Penguin update is real time, so it's not a one time uh, update to the algorithm. It's actually continuously updating, uh, and it's basically looking for websites that are what, what are called over optimized. And as I mentioned earlier, Google is looking at how many links are coming to your website, so how many other websites are linking to your website. And if you know that that's a, something that Google looks for, one way to get your website to rank high is to obviously encourage other websites to link to you. You can kind of take that too far and go out and create, let's say, a, a, a fake blog where the purpose of that blog is exclusively to link to your website. And uh, when Google figures that out, they, uh, they want to remove those websites from their search results that don't deserve to be ranked high. So there were a lot of websites that would get links through tactics that uh, are, are not natural, like building websites for the purpose of linking to other websites. So that's basically against Google's terms of service. Uh, it's obviously manipulating the search results, and Google released the Penguin update to uh, address that issue. The next update here is Google Plus. That's Google's social network. This was Google's answer to Facebook. Uh, everyone knows Facebook, the largest uh, social media site out there, and it's actually a, a, a threat to Google because it's stealing uh, users. So Google updated uh, or created Google Plus. And that's also a, um, a, a key takeaway here is that Google clearly finds social media important and it highlights the importance of social media as it relates to SEO. So as social media signals, there's a big debate in the SEO world about whether or not social media directly affects your search engine rankings. But uh, uh, there is a correlation between the two. And likely, uh, if you're doing things properly on social media, uh, that has a positive, a direct positive influence on your SEO rankings. And finally, one of the more recent updates was the Hummingbird update. And this was actually a complete overhaul of Google's algorithm. And uh, they did this because a lot of people are now searching using voice recognition. They're actually uh, uh, just talking to their phones when they do searches. And, uh, and because of that, Google needed to figure out how to understand context and synonyms. So if someone is, is uh, searching for uh, best food nearby, as humans, we know uh, that means they're looking for the best restaurants. But as a computer or an algorithm, it's not as easy to figure out, like, hey, that someone says best food nearby, that actually means I'm looking for the best restaurants near my physical location. So Google can actually figure that out now using the, the, the new Hummingbird algorithm update. And uh, that's an important update, as we'll talk about later, because that affects how you structure your website. Okay, now that you understand those updates, these old school tactics are gonna make more sense. And uh, I'm calling these old school tactics, these are tactics that you could have used several years ago and they actually would have helped you rank high in Google, but now they'll actually just get you into trouble with Google. So the first one here is over-optimized web pages. You don't wanna do that because, again, we talked about the Panda update that was uh, Google's uh, response to websites that were uh, giving a bad user experience, maybe having uh, 
poor navigation on the website. So what you want to do, you actually don't want to write for search engines. When you, when you create the content on your pages, you want to write naturally. You want to write for your prospective clients. You also definitely want to stay away from what's called keyword stuffing. That's where you would put the, key, uh, put the particular keyword that you're trying to rank for on the page uh, and, and force that into the website copy. You want to stay away from that. Whenever Google thinks you're uh, keyword stuffing, you're, you're clearly over-optimizing your web page. And again, because of that Panda update, that's going to hurt your rankings. So you really want to write naturally. You want to make sure you have enough content on your pages. And uh, the rule of thumb is to aim for at least 100 words of content. Um, if it's a more informational page, maybe it's about a type of uh, spa treatment that you provide, and that's more informational, that uh, should really be closer to a thousand words. And the reason for that is because you're trying to give Google the most authoritative page online for that particular topic. And that's what Google ultimately wants to rank high in the search results. And if you're only writing, let's say, 200 words about that spa treatment, it's not likely that that is the most authoritative uh, page online about that topic. And ultimately, it comes down to providing valuable information. You want to think about this from the searcher's perspective. What are they looking for when they search that particular keyword that you're trying to rank for? And you want to provide the most valuable information, the most authoritative page that Google could show for that result. Uh, Shira had a question here. Is that using keywords too frequently on the same page? Yes. When I, when I mentioned keyword stuffing, that's exactly what it is. It's using the keyword too many times on the page. And uh, you can tell when you're reading a page that's uh, over-optimized. It just doesn't read very well. And Google now can figure that out. Their algorithm will, uh, it will read the page and uh, it can figure out if it was well-written or if it was written more for the algorithms with uh, lots of keywords mixed into the copy uh, in not a very natural way. Okay, the second old school tactic that you definitely want to avoid is self-created links. So I talked about the importance of links. That's what Google looks for. Uh, they're going to look and to see how many other websites are linking to you and if those are other relevant websites. And uh, it's actually against Google's terms of service to, or uh, yeah, it's against their terms to, to buy links in the, uh, in, in the attempt to get your website to rank higher. So if they f figure out that you purchased a link, they, uh, you, you run the risk that they're going to penalize your site or they'll just, uh, not count that link when they uh, are looking at other links to rank your site. So you don't want to buy links. You definitely don't want to add links from irrelevant websites. So if you are running a day spa, uh, you're not, it doesn't really make sense to have a link on, let's say, a car dealership. Uh, that would be you know, not a very relevant website for you to be getting a link on, uh, and definitely not, let's say uh, there's an article about uh, a, a new sports car, uh, it wouldn't be very natural for that website to then be linking to a day spa. Google knows that, uh, and that type of uh, self-created link would definitely get you into trouble. Uh, next here is something called anchor text. And you can see the example in blue, font with the underline. Uh, most people know that that's a link online. And those words, day spa, in that example, are the anchor text for that link. So if that was a link online, and you'd click on day spa, and that might shoot you over to your website. Google looks at that anchor text, and they look at that 
uh, that phrase or if it's a, just a word and uh, they use that to determine if your page is relevant for uh, a certain keyword. In this case, if someone searched day spa and you have lots of links that say day spa, that means your website is likely relevant for the keyword being searched, which is day spa. Now that you know that, you might think, hey, I should get hundreds of links on websites that say day spa, and that therefore I'll be more likely to rank high for that keyword. While that's true, if you take that too far and you get uh, the majority of your links are just saying day spa, that's a red flag to Google. You're probably creating those links yourself or, uh, or possibly paying for them. You're doing something that's not natural because there's no way lots of websites would link to you with the exact same anchor text. And finally, when it comes to getting links, it's a much safer strategy to focus on sharing content to get those links. So when you think about how could I get lots of links from other relevant websites, you really want to take the approach where you're creating really good information uh, for example, about a, a spa treatment, if you have the most authoritative guide to a certain spa treatment and then you uh, shared that on social media or maybe emailed other relevant uh, businesses, they are going to be more likely to want to link to that content because it's a really authoritative piece of content. Okay, the third old school tactic you want to avoid is unnecessary SEO pages. This is a common mistake I see. I see lots of businesses uh, creating different pages for every single variation of a particular keyword. And rather than doing that, you want to group your keywords by what I'm calling a keyword theme. And then you want to create one page per keyword theme. So you would not want to create multiple pages for similar keywords. For example, uh, a lot of times the, the plural version is, uh, is going to have the same meaning as the singular, and uh, in case, which case you'd have the same page. Um, and then you can see there I'm saying similar intent. So you want to put yourself in the shoes of the searcher and think about what is it that they're really looking for. And if they're if you have two different keywords and they're essentially looking for exactly the same thing, then you likely only want to create one page for both of those keywords and try to rank that page for both of those keywords. And here's an example. Uh, back in the day, uh, it was actually a good tactic to create separate pages for, let's say, Day Spa and NYC versus NYC Day Spa because those are those are effectively two different keywords, but uh, ever since Google went to uh, the Hummingbird algorithm and they've made a lot of updates since then, Google can figure out that those are exactly the same uh, intent. Someone searching day spa on NYC is looking for exactly the same thing as NYC day spa. So you'd really just want to have one page optimized for both of those different keywords. All right, looking ahead, I've, here's some predictions. Google is going to definitely continue to fight SEO spam, like keyword stuffing, the unnatural links that we talked about, and unnecessary pages for similar keywords. Again, uh, all of that stuff is, uh, is trying to manip manipulate Google's algorithm. And when Google thinks that's happening, they are very sensitive to it because it threatens their business model. Uh, mobile and, and local signals are, they just continue to rise in importance. More and more people are using mobile. Uh, more, pe more people are actually searching on mobile devices versus desktop devices. And because of that, uh, mobile creates uh, more local signals. And Google now knows uh, when people are on the move, they want to know, uh, especially if they're searching day spot near me, that uh, 
more of a, a local type keyword. They're looking for uh, day spas near that person's physical location. So those local signals are very important for SEO. And I also predict that social signals will become even more important. As Facebook continues to grow, uh, Google uh, continues to invest in Google+. Uh, clearly, they see an importance in social media, and that will continue to become more and more important from an SEO perspective. And ultimately, SEO, I hope you've uh, realized at this point that uh, SEO is not about tricking Google. It's really about partnering with Google, and that's the mindset you want to be in. You want to figure out how can you help Google's algorithm determine that your pages are deserve to be ranked high in the search results. So you want to partner with Google, help them determine that uh, you deserve to be ranked high. And if you think about it, SEO really reflects real relationships or offline relationships. And it really resembles the real world. You want so in the real world, you want to create buzz about your business. You want people talking about you um, and referring your business to other people. And in online, you want people talking about you in social media. You want people sharing information about you, which uh, online really comes down to linking to pages on your site. And you want online reviews about your business. There's a great quote from Wayne Gretzky. So what would Wayne, Wayne do? A good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So if you want to be successful with SEO and being ranked high in the, the search results, you need to know where Google is going. And at this point, uh, I, I think you should have a good understanding of where or how SEO has evolved over the years and, uh, and where it's heading as far as um, uh, making sure that what you're doing on your site is not going to get you penalized or hurt your chances of ranking high in Google. And with that background, we'll be able to dive into the five rules to follow. And I call these the five R's. So the first R is research. By research, I'm really talking about keyword research. And uh, the tool you can use for keyword research is Google's Keyword Planner tool. If you just go to google.com and Google Keyword Planner tool, you should get this as the fir very first result in the search results. And when you use this tool, it works like a thesaurus. You'll just type in some of the keywords you think people are searching, like day spa, day spa near me, uh, day spa in uh, New York City. Type in the different variations, click search, and this tool will tell you how many times those keywords are searched, and it will also show you additional search phrases that are related to the keywords that you put into the tool. And when you get these results, you want to look at how many times the keyword is searched, and obviously if it's not searched at all, that's not going to be a, a good keyword for you to focus on. That means uh, that's no search volume. So you want to focus on keywords that have search volume, and then you want to focus on what, uh, what we call buying intent. And buying intent means that the person searching is looking ultimately to make a purchase. If you look at the example I gave you here, we've got the keyword day spa in NYC versus best facial for acne. Now, if you provide a uh, acne facial treatment at your spa, that keyword is certainly relevant, best facial for acne. However, if you think about it, there's really no buying intent for that keyword. If you think about all the different types of people out there that could be searching that keyword, the majority are probably doing research. They're not at the stage where they're really looking for a spa treatment. They're just really just trying to figure out what is the best facial for acne versus someone searching day spa in NYC. Really the only reason you're going to search for that keyword is if you're looking to ultimately schedule an appointment with a day spa. So 
So that's the difference between buying intent versus research intent keywords. When you're doing your keyword research, you want to focus on the buying intent keywords because those are going to lead to more uh, sales in your business. And then finally, you want to answer this question. Do you really deserve to be number one for that particular keyword? And that comes down to whether or not you actually offer that product or service. So if you don't even offer a, uh, a facial treatment for acne, uh, it's probably not going to work out for you to try to rank for that keyword, even though those, some of those people would be good prospects for your business. Okay, so that's step one. You need to figure out what are all the relevant keywords that you want to rank for and that you deserve to rank high for. That's the goal, and you want to focus on the buying intent ones. And step two is called relevance. And more specifically, we're talking about website relevance. We're trying to make your website relevant for those keywords that you want to rank for. This is really marketing 101. You want to match the message on your website to the market that's searching for those keywords. So to do that, you're going to pick just one page on your site per target keyword or uh, target keyword theme like we talked about before, which is going to be uh, the, the similar phrases of that keyword. So just one page on your site. Uh, if you have, have different spa treatments, then uh, each page that is talking about those spa treatments, you want to match those pages to the relevant keywords when someone is searching for that treatment. And then to make sure that Google knows your website's relevant, you do have to make some edits. And you want to use your target keyword on that web page, specifically on the title of the page. And you can see in parentheses there, I give the HTML code. That's the less than sign, title, greater than sign. That's HTML. Your developer would know how to make that edit, so don't worry if that's uh, like a foreign language. Uh, you want to edit the title of the page. You want to edit the headers. Try to incorporate uh, a variation of your target keyword in the header of the page. And that's kind of like... Um, if you're writing a paper for school, the title of that paper is really the is like a header on a, on a web page. And then, obviously, the body cut copy needs to be about that target keyword that you're trying to rank for. And uh, I mentioned before, you want to write naturally. You don't want to just stuff the keyword on that. And if you've done this correctly and you've picked one page target keyword theme, then you're naturally going to include that keyword in the body copy. You really don't even have to worry about it. And the, here's the golden rule of relevance. You really want to create the web page that you yourself would want to find in the search results if you were the one searching for that keyword. So again, put yourself in the prospect shoes. What is it that he or she is really looking for, and then uh, make sure you have that information on the page that you're trying to rank. <clears throat> okay. Third R here is reputation, and uh, I saw another question come in. Sure, we'll we'll get to that in the Q and A. So third R. Reputation, more specifically website reputation. At this point, you've done the, the keyword research. You know the, the keywords that you want to rank for. You have edited your website so that Google thinks your pages are relevant. And then once Google knows that you have a page that's relevant for a keyword, Google then has to rank all of the relevant pages. And there might be millions of other uh, web pages that are relevant for that target keyword. And the way Google is going to rank them is based on the reputation of your website. And if you have a better reputation, or what's called a high authority, or domain authority, 
you're going to rank higher than your competitors uh, that don't have as high of a reputation or as high domain authority. And again, we'll use a real world analogy here for your reputation. If you think about your own reputation, what uh, what what are those? Uh, what's that a factor of? It's really a factor of your friends. So um, kind of have that reputation by association. If you hang out with other people that uh, have good reputations, you would will tend other people will tend to think that you yourself have a, a good reputation as well. And on the flip side, if you're hanging out with people that don't have a great reputation, then uh, the the reverse is true as well. Uh, a lot of people will think that you yourself don't have a good reputation. And in the online world, that same analogy holds true. And that, uh, and rather than friends, it really comes down to who's linking to you. And if other uh, websites that have a high reputation or high domain authority are linking to you, then by association, your website will be seen to have a high reputation or high domain authority. And again, I want to remind you, you want to focus on attracting links. You don't want to go out and just buy or manually try to create these links by, uh, by setting up, let's say, a fake blog. All right, now that you understand the, the first three R's, I want to take a, take a minute here to walk through those two tactics to get ranked in as little as 30 days. The first tactic is called piggyback SEO. And what you're going to do is actually piggyback on other high authority websites. Two examples here, uh, YouTube has a high authority, PR Web has a high authority. There's going to be other websites in your particular industry that have a high authority. And you can piggyback on them by publishing content on their website and you use your keyword in the title of those pages. The way that works, again, by putting your, key, your target keyword in the title of that page, that tells Google that you have a relevant page. And because you're publishing this on a domain that already has a high authority, you've already taken care of step three, which is your reputation. So by default, you've got uh, a web page that's already deemed uh, authoritative. And then you're just making sure that it is highly relevant to the keyword you want to rank to rank for. Here are a couple examples. This uh, highlighted here in red is an article that I wrote. It's called How to Create a Profitable Google AdWords Campaign. And you can see the domain there is kissmetrics.com. Google has uh, determined that that website has a good reputation, a high domain authority. And the keyword here is how to create a Google AdWords campaign. That keyword is mentioned in the title. So it is a, an extremely relevant article. And it is on a domain that has a high authority. Therefore, it ranks very high. You can see it's ranked number three. Here's another example where it's just Google AdWords campaign. And uh, Shira, this actually relates to your question about long string keywords or long tail keywords. This is more of a long tail keyword, how to create a Google AdWords campaign. It's a long keyword. And this is the shorter version, just Google AdWords campaign. And again, this is going to rank for that keyword as well because Google AdWords campaign is in the title, it's highly relevant. And again, the, uh, the, the domain is a, a high rep has a high reputation. It's actually ranking three be just behind Google. So the two ahead of it are, are Google's own websites. All right, so that's tactic number one. That's piggyback SEO. Tactic number two is called local SEO. With local SEO, you're not necessarily ranking your website. You're ranking what's called your Google My Business page. This is a free account that you can create at Google. Uh, just Google Google My Business. You'll be able to create a, a free account. And this is what Google's showing 
in the search results when Google thinks that the person searching is looking for a local business. And you can see the stats here, 20% of searches are local, 40% of mobile searches are local, and 97% of consumers search for local businesses. So this was really Google's response to all of these local intent type searches. When you do one of those searches, Google shows the map on the first page, and then they show the location of all the nearby um, uh, companies or businesses. And the same three steps hold true, except now we're, we're really focusing on the Google My Business profile. You want to use uh, Google's keyword tool, again, to find the relevant keywords. That's the research. Step one. Step two is relevance. You want to use the keywords in your profile, most importantly, as categories in your profile. And step three is reputation. And rather than just focusing on links to your website, you're now focusing on what are called citations and online reviews. And a citation is just a mention of your business name, address, and phone number on other websites, like, uh, like business directories. Here's a local uh, SEO success story, just so you can see how quickly this can work. This one's from Barney. About a month ago, I started going through the local SEO steps. I've noticed my Google rankings moving up, and right now I'm at the number one position for my most important keyword in my area. I'm now receiving phone calls for my listing, and I just started working on a project that came in directly from Google Plus Local, or Google My Business. Here's another one. Uh, after just one month, I started ranking in Google and I've already gained two new clients. That's actually from a massage therapist in Hawaii. So you can see results very quickly by using what we call local SEO tactics. All right, so here's a recap of what we covered so far. We talked about the three R's. We gave you two tactics to rank in 30 days or less. And the fourth R is my favorite R, it's revenue. Because at the end of the day, the number one goal is not to get ranked in Google, it's to generate new clients for your business, generate revenue. The three factors here are going to be your website copy. You wanna make sure you're using sales copy best practices. Uh, make sure you have social proof. That is critical with digital marketing. When, uh, when people are shopping online and comparing different um, day spas, they are going to want to make sure that other people have been to your day spa and had good things to say. So that's why social proof is critical. There's so much skeptic, skepticism online, uh, so that uh, that's a huge component to uh, getting conversions. And then CTA just stands for call to action, and you want to make sure you have a strong call to action on your website for people to call you or come to, to actually come to the day spa to get an appointment. The second component is what's called a lead magnet. And uh, that is a tool you can use on your site to generate leads from uh, all the visitors you're getting. Uh, a very simple lead magnet is to offer a coupon. So you could have some kind of coupon for, um, for new, new clients. Uh, who want to come in and, and schedule an appointment. Um, so that's a, a simple way to do it. The other way to do it would be to have some kind of free information, like a free report, um, a guide to some kind of uh, uh, treatment or a wellness guide. And you would uh, offer that on your site in exchange for an email address. And then that gives you contact information that you can use to follow up with all these folks who come to your site and maybe aren't ready to make an appointment right away, but are willing to give you their email address so that you can nurture them, stay in touch with them throughout the year and uh, give them an incentive to come in or schedule an appointment with different offers throughout the year. And the third component to generating revenue is to make sure that your, the keywords that you're ranking for are actually searched by prospective customers. And that relates back to step one, which is keyword research. And you want to make sure you're going after buying intent keywords, not research intent keywords. And finally, you want to 
make sure you're tracking your SEO efforts, tracking your return on investment. And to do that, I recommend you have Google Analytics set up, and that will track all of the traffic you're getting. And you can set up goals to track the leads that you're generating from your SEO efforts. All right, the fifth and final R is responsibility. And that's really answering this question, who is responsible for your SEO? And remember that SEO is not a set it and forget it strategy. It does require ongoing work. And I always recommend businesses only delegate this work after they understand the basics of SEO. And by attending this webinar, you should have a good foundation for SEO so that you can then either hire someone in-house to be running your SEO or go and find an agency to, to execute on your SEO. And here's a great slide. Uh, because it, most people I talk to are scared of Google updates. Uh, and it is scary when you think about Google uh, releasing something that could potentially hurt your business. Let's say you're ranking number one and, and Google has an update, and now you're ranking 100 on, uh, on Google's results. That could certainly be scary. But if you're following the best practices that I walked through, uh, these updates are actually opportunities for you because there are some businesses out there that are not playing by the rules. And when Google makes these updates, a lot of times they uh, will uh, move the, the businesses that are ranking high and they'll get kicked off the first page. They might be doing something that's against Google's terms of service. That opens the door for businesses uh, like us that are playing by the rules to actually move up in the rankings and get even more traffic and sales. All right, before we get to q and I did promise a gift. And uh, the gift here is to figure out whether or not SEO is a good investment for you. And I want to give you a SEO opportunity assessment. And here's what you'll get. You'll get a website review. We'll do the initial keyword research. We'll look at your current Google rankings for the relevant keywords that we find. We'll do a competitor analysis for you. And it includes a 30-minute SEO consultation. And you'll actually get that for free by attending this webinar. I'm going to show you a poll so that you can get this. Okay, so I just launched the poll. On the screen, you should see a poll. And it says, uh, do you want a free SEO opportunity assessment? There's the answer, yes, I want to know if SEO is a good investment. There's no, I'm not interested, or maybe I'd like to talk to someone first. I will leave this up for 10 more seconds while I get a drink. All right, so I'll close it down in three, two, one. And for actually one more slide before we go to Q&A. Here's a, a quote from one of our clients. Jordan Conover said, Main Street ROI produces results. Working with these guys has improved my business, and they have made it easy. They're a pleasure to work with, high communication, and have my best interest in mind. Most importantly of all, I never feel like I'm talking to a hired gun when I email these guys. I value and consider them a part of my team. It's just a example of what clients are saying about our services. And with that, we'll go to Q&A. And I mainly have this slide as a reminder to myself to uh, ask you guys attending to complete the uh, survey at the end. So when I do ultimately close down the webinar, you'll get redirected to a, a very quick survey and would really appreciate your feedback. Uh, just asking some questions about um, what we did well today, what we could improve, as well as future topics. Okay, so again, if you have questions, in the, it should be in the upper right corner of your screen. There's a Q&A box. And just type in your questions. Let me check the time. It's 12.50, so we're right on schedule. 
you have uh, questions, I'll stay on for another 10 minutes. If you don't have questions, that's totally fine. And if you um, if we shut this down and you have questions afterward, you can certainly email uh, info at MainStreetROI.com with any questions that you have. Uh, okay, I see uh, Shira here. Uh, excellent webinar. Thanks for your thoughts. Or thanks your thoughts on Yoast versus Yoast Premium. So I'm familiar with Yoast and the uh, the free plugin for WordPress. I'm actually not familiar with Yoast Premium. Um, I'm going to guess that that's a paid plugin, and I'm not exactly sure what uh, extra bells and whistles you get. But I do know with the free version, at least when I've used it, uh, the free version was was good enough. And uh, if you don't like Yoast or run into any problems, another plugin is All-in-One SEO. I've used that as well. Okay, Michael has a question here. Do websites like Yelp and Demand Force help with inbound links? So directories in general do help, and that is a, a great way to get a foundation for links because uh, a lot of business directories like Yelp will uh, include your website URL as uh, part of the directory and then that right away is a link back to your site. Um, the other benefit of directories, if you remember I talked about local SEO and how you want to get citations by setting up a lot of business directories, you're getting a citation for your website, or for your business, and that's going to help your local rankings or your Google My Business rankings. Uh, Margie said, what do you think of WordPress website? I, uh, I like WordPress. Uh, our website, uh, MainStreetROI.com, is on WordPress. <clears throat> I think it's a, a great CRM to use. The only negatives I've heard in the just you know talking to more advanced IT professionals, they'll say that WordPress is not the most secure. Uh, but I personally have not run into that issue. Um, I certainly haven't run into it, uh, you know, where I could say that WordPress is is worse off than any other platform as far as somebody hacking your website. I, I like WordPress uh, from an SEO perspective. It's it's definitely great. It's very flexible. You're able to edit what you need to edit. Um, while we're on that topic, I'll mention other websites do not allow you to edit certain things that uh, they can really um, put you at a disadvantage from an SEO perspective because uh, you won't be able to, let's say, edit the title of the page or edit the header of the page. Um, and we've run into problems with Squarespace because of that, uh, as well as uh, Wix, wix.com. There are lots of other sites like that or other tools like that where um, they're really, th those tools allow you to create websites quickly. Um, it's kind of more of a do-it-yourself type tool. Uh, but once you start getting into SEO, uh, there are some limitations, and that's why I generally recommend WordPress. Uh, let's see, another question here from Shira. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, you were talking about YouTube before I actually just started a YouTube channel. So in terms of optimizing, are we saying for each entry on the channel or just for the channel page itself? Yes, that's a great question. I was specifically talking about YouTube, specific uh, individual YouTube videos on your channel. You can use piggyback SEO by, if you're creating videos, you do want to do the keyword research and see what is the, uh, the most relevant keyword to try to rank for 
for that video and make sure you put that keyword in the title of the video and that gives us the best chance to rank on uh, the first page of google.com but that's also going to optimize it for YouTube's search engine which is believe it or not the second largest search engine so you'll be uh, getting traffic to that uh, hopefully from google.com if that video ranks high in Google uh, and if not uh, you'll give yourself the best shot to rank high in uh, YouTube's search engine Uh, Margie said, "Will this webinar be allowed to view again?" Yes, we'll be. We are recording. The sanity check. I just confirmed we are still recording, and uh, we typically get this out within 24 hours. I'm hoping we'll be able to send it later today, but if not, by tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, Michael asked a question here. As a spa, would you benefit? From having more pages with less content on them or less pages with more content I realize that may be an oversimplified question it's definitely oversimplified um, because at the end of the day it comes down to step one which is keyword research and what are all the relevant keyword phrases that you would want to rank for from there you can organize them into similar themes like we talked about uh, and make sure they, they all have similar intent and then you want to have a page that matches all of those similar keywords or each uh, group of similar keywords so you might have uh, let's say a hundred different keywords and when you group them together you you have something like 20 groups of keywords and you want to have 20 individual pages to rank for the corresponding keywords so that's how you would determine how many pages you need and then in terms of the content on those pages uh, it, it there's no exact science in terms of you know you need 500 words or a thousand words when um, when it's a very straightforward service that someone's looking for or they're looking for an actual product Google knows that that's what that person's looking for they're not looking to go read a novel so you don't need to have 3,000 words when someone is just searching for a very specific spa product um, with that said though if you if you can include more content on that page that generally is going to help you it's going to be more uh, more of a robust page more well-rounded and Google will deem that more valuable for the person searching so I do recommend when you can have more content even if it is a straightforward product or service page when it's a more informational page especially when it's a research intent type type keyword you really want to aim for uh, at least a thousand words um, or even even two thousand words to make it a very authoritative page that gives it the best shot at ranking high because Google is going to see that as, hey this is the the best information out there for this keyword uh, and Shira we do offer more webinars um, we actually provide free webinars like this we we do paid training every month um, as well as uh, what we call master classes that go even more in depth uh, we do those about on a quarterly basis that's really the, the training side of our business and then um, if you go to MainStreetROI.com you'll see there's a training section of our site as well as a services section of our site um, and that's really the breakdown of our business you can see if you're more of a do-it-yourselfer want to learn how to do this implement it on your own you can go to the training section if you want help with and have somebody do it for you I'd recommend going to the services section with that it is now 1 p.m. I'm gonna close this down I would appreciate it again if you complete the survey that will uh, you should get redirected right after I close this down have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday have a great week and hope to see you on a future webinar take care